Hello, today we're going to go over Lewis Structure Notes. This is section 9.8 of AP Chemistry. This is a bit of overlap from the last set of notes, but resonance structures are one of two or more Lewis structures that have the same skeletal formula, but different electron arrangements. So for example, with O3, we have three oxygen atoms, and there is a double bond in between one side of oxygens and a single bond on the opposite side. So in order to draw the um, correct structure, I almost forgot the last two here, make sure everybody has eight. We have to actually draw two versions of the molecule, one where the double bond is on the left and another where the double bond is on the right in order to show what's actually happening. So what's really going on with this structure is this double bond that's on the, the double bond on the um, oxygen, the outer oxygen, is split between both oxygen atoms. So instead of having a single bond on one side and a double bond on the other, it's actually one and a half bonds on both. And the way that we know that is by looking at the bond length. So if we had a double bond and a single bond in the molecule, you would have a shorter bond on one side and a longer bond on the other. But in fact, we have two bonds that are the same length and they're slightly shorter than a single bond. So we know they're more than just that single bond. So for nitrate, NO3 minus, NO3 with a negative one charge, we can put the double bond that's gonna form on any of the oxygens. So if we are doing the resonance structures to show what's actually going on, we have to put the double bond on all three oxygens. So I started with the top oxygen, then we would have to draw the double bond on the left, and the others would be single bonds, and then we make sure everybody has eight, Okay, and now of course I'm skipping the step where we needed to add up the valence electrons because I know what the structures are. You guys would not know that we need a double bond until you gave everybody eight and then counted them and realized that you had used too many electrons. So we have to take some away and make a double bond. So that's what's going on here. And last but not least, I have one more structure that I'm gonna squeeze in up here. The double-sided arrow just shows us that it's, it's actually all three and that double bond is being split between the three oxygen atoms. So here is our last one where the double bond is on the right hand side. And we have single bonds on the top and on the left. Okay, and the whole thing is negatively charged. So when you're drawing resonance structures, you have to draw all the possible locations of that double bond. So it's the same as a Lewis structure, just a little bit more work. Formal charge is a number that we can assign to each atom in a molecule where we take the number of valence electrons that that atom brought to the bond and we subtract the number of non-bonding electrons. So non-bonding would be like here, for example, where they're not in between two um, atoms, this, this pair belongs directly to that oxygen. And then half of the bonding electrons are going to go back with that element. So let's do some examples. In HF, we have to add up the valence electrons. Fluorine brings seven. Hydrogen brings one. So we have a total of eight electrons for HF. And I have drawn them all. And remember, hydrogen, hydrogen is an exception to the octet rule. It's happy with only two electrons. Um, so this is the correct Lewis structure for this diagram. So what is the formal charge on each atom? So we're going to take the valence electrons for hydrogen. That was one. And I'm going to subtract the non-bonding. Hydrogen doesn't have any non-bonding electrons. So that's zero plus half of the bonding electrons. So we're gonna like split this bond up and half of them are gonna go with the hydrogen and the other half go with fluorine. So one goes with hydrogen and then the other one goes with fluorine. So for hydrogen, it's one 
minus zero plus one, which is one. So zero is the formal charge on that hydrogen. For fluorine, seven valence electrons is what it brought, minus the non-bonding electrons, which there are six of them, plus half of the bonding electrons, so one. And I get seven minus seven, which is also zero. So we would write that out a lot neater than I just did, but the formal charge on the hydrogen and the fluorine is both zero, which is actually what molecules prefer. They want to have the smallest formal charge possible, um, and zero is um, one of the smallest. You can have a negative one or a negative two as well. Okay, let's do HCN. One more example. And... I can't remember if this is a double or a triple bond, so let's go ahead and do the full thing. I have one valence electron from hydrogen, plus the four from carbon, and the five from nitrogen. So I have a total of ten electrons to place around here. Um, I'm going to put um, hydrogen only wants two, so it's full. I'm going to go ahead and give everybody eight, so we can see how many we have um, extra. So there's 8, 10, 12, 14, and I only have 12 electrons to work with. So using four too many means I'm going to need two double bonds or a triple bond. And since I cannot make a double bond between H and C, because hydrogen can only make one bond, I know the double bond, sorry, the triple bond is going to be right here. And that means I have to get rid of some electrons here. There we go. We need to get right on there. That's really tricky. Okay, and then since there's six in between, that makes eight. So I need to get rid of these. There's six plus two more makes eight. So now everybody's happy, and we're going to count up the electrons just to make sure. So there's two, four, six, eight, and ten electrons, and that is correct. So let's do the formal charge. Hydrogen brought one minus there's none that are um, non-bonding. Half of the bonding pair between H and C is one, so the formal charge on hydrogen is zero. For carbon, it's four minus, there are no non-bonding electrons on carbon, um, but we do have three bonding on the right side of the carbon. So three is half of the bond um, since there are six electrons in between C and N, half of that would be three electrons. And then I have one more between the H and the C, so a total of four for the um, electrons here. I'm going to put a line here to show that these are two separate things. So the formal charge on carbon is zero. Nitrogen is five minus, there are two that are not bonded to the carbon, so two plus half of the bonding electrons in between the C and the N, which means three of them. And I get zero also on this structure. So this is a stable structure where all of the formal charges are zero. Here are the rules for formal charge. The sum of the formal charges in a neutral molecule is zero. The sum of formal charges in an ion is the charge of the ion. Small or zero formal charges on individual atoms are better, meaning more stable, than large ones. When formal charges can't be avoided, negative, the negative charge should reside on the most electronegative element. So if I had up here, if I had to give one of them a negative, the fluorine should have the negative and the hydrogen should have the positive. Between H, C, and N, nitrogen has the greatest electronegativity. So if one of them was a negative, um, then nitrogen should have that negative charge, formal charge. Okay, and then this we've gone over, but let's just talk about it really quickly. There are exceptions to the octet rule. They are right here. Let's underline them. Hydrogen is happy with two electrons. Beryllium is happy with four electrons. And boron is happy with six electrons. So just remember the two, four, and the six. Um, these do not make double bonds. So what we have is um, just exceptions to the octet rule where they are happy or stable without eight electrons. And that's because of their molecular orbitals. 
that we could draw. Okay, so for odd electron species, meaning um, NO, for example, would have five electrons from the nitrogen plus six electrons from the oxygen, giving me a total of 11 electrons. One of them is going to be unpaired. So N, O, um, I believe there's a double bond. Let's see what that gives us. So if I had two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve 12 electrons here, I only have 11 to work with. Which one am I going to remove? It's going to be the least electronegative one. Um, you just need to do your best as to where those go. You will most likely not see this on the AP test, um, but I'm going to take one away from the nitrogen because it's just a little bit less electronegative, so oxygen is going to hold on to the electrons a little bit more. Okay, these are called free radicals, and they're very reactive. Um, they're found in smog, and they are not good because they will steal electrons from our skin or our lungs and cause damage. Okay, and last but not least, these expanded octets, SI, this is hexafluorosilicate, if you remember, SIF6, you just have to do your best putting those fluorines around the silicon, okay, and connecting them, and I should have added up the valence electrons, so let's do that really quick. Uh, there are six Fluorines each brings seven electrons, plus silicon has four, plus that negative two charge means I have two extra electrons there. Okay, so because I don't want to mess it up, um, I have six times seven, plus, oh, six more. I could have just done six times eight. I have 48 electrons to put over here. And you know what? I can tell that these are all going to be, this is another one where you kind of want them to make a box around it, but it's nearly impossible to do, so you just do your best. Okay, and then the whole thing has a negative two charge, two minus. Um, if I were to add them all up, each fluorine has eight around it, and there are six of them, so six times eight gives me 48 electrons. Uh, PCL5, you're going to have five chlorines all the way around, and I will let you guys add up the electrons and place them around the phosphorus, but it looks very similar to what we just drew. All right, that's it for Lewis structure.